It starts with a single shipment leaving the port of Durban. A sleek, futuristic crate marked with a glowing emblem, MC Technologies. The world takes notice. Cameras capture the container being loaded onto a massive cargo ship bound for Asia. Within hours, the footage spreads across news networks. By morning, the headlines are everywhere. Maxwell's inventions hit the global market. The first buyers. In Dubai, luxury car collectors gather in a glass-walled showroom. Under shimmering lights, the first self-powered car stands proudly, humming softly, glowing faintly with streams of blue energy along its frame. The crowd circles in awe. Billionaires whisper offers, numbers climbing higher with every passing second. Meanwhile, in Singapore, government officials finalize a confidential deal. Their focus isn't cars, but self-powered generators. The devices are said to sustain entire neighborhoods without fuel, cables, or charging stations. Within days, the first units are quietly installed in military bases and research centers. The black market emerges. Not all sales are official. In the back alleys of Istanbul, under the cover of night, mysterious figures unload a shipment of Maxwell small devices, compact energy units rumored to power entire buildings. Each unit sells for a fortune on the underground market. Buyers are warned. No guarantees, no refunds. Whispers spread that some of these devices were stolen before they could reach their official buyers. The black market for Maxwell's technology grows faster than anyone imagined. The West responds. In New York, Wall Street traders watch in disbelief as stock prices of oil companies and traditional automakers collapse. Emergency meetings are called at the highest levels. Behind closed doors, executives debate whether to block the import of Maxwell's technology or attempt to buy distribution rights directly from Africa. But rumors swirl that it's already too late. Nations in Asia and the Middle East are striking deals at lightning speed, locking in exclusive contracts. Across Europe, governments issue public statements urging caution, while quietly sending envoys to negotiate with Maxwell's representatives. Everyone wants a peace, but not everyone can afford the price. Back in Africa, in Harare, Maxwell's headquarters are surrounded by a sea of people. Outside the gates, delegations from multiple nations wait, their flags fluttering in the hot sun. Some arrive in armored vehicles, others in sleek black limousines. Inside the lab, Maxwell's team works nonstop, fielding calls, signing contracts, and shipping prototypes. Maxwell himself sits in a quiet room, far from chaos. His eyes are on a world map pinned to the wall, dozens of red markers showing where his inventions have already landed. The map is filling up fast. But Maxwell knows, with every sale, the danger grows. Some buyers want progress. Others want control. Signs of trouble. In Moscow, a mysterious fire engulfs a warehouse rumored to contain Maxwell's devices. No official record confirmed shipment, but videos leak online, showing fragments of scorched futuristic equipment. Speculation spreads. Sabotage, espionage, maybe even war. At the same time, in South America, a massive demonstration turns violent as citizens demand their governments secure Maxwell's technology for people, not just the elite. Police clash with protesters shouting, We want the future too. The world is no longer just responding with curiosity. It's responding with desperation. Secret alliances. In Geneva, a private meeting unfolds in the shadows of an international summit. Delegates from Asia, Africa, and the Middle East gather in a soundproof chamber. No cameras, no journalists. Only whispered negotiations. Documents are exchanged. Contracts that speak of shared access, joint manufacturing, and exclusive territories. A powerful alliance is forming, determined to control Maxwell's inventions before the West can react. Outside the hall, rumors swirl. Some say the deal could reshape global trade. Others whisper it could fracture old alliances forever. Theft on the seas. Far out in the Indian Ocean, under the cover of darkness, a cargo ship carrying Maxwell's devices is intercepted. Armed raiders swarm aboard, cutting through steel containers with precision tools. Within minutes, entire crates of self-powered units vanish into waiting vessels. Hours later, intelligence reports confirm what many feared. 
The stolen shipment is already on its way to an undisclosed destination. No one knows who ordered the raid. But suspicions fall on powerful players who want Maxwell's technology without paying the price. Maxwell's counter move. Back in Harare, Maxwell meets with his closest advisors in a dimly lit conference room. Maps of the world spread across the table. Red markers showing official buyers. Black markers showing stolen shipments. Maxwell listens quietly as his team debates solutions. Finally, he speaks. If they want to steal my technology, let them try. What they don't know is that every device carries my signature. Without it, they're useless. The room falls silent. His advisors exchange stunned looks. Maxwell reveals a hidden safeguard, an embedded mechanism only he can activate. Stolen devices may glow, hum, even appear functional, but without his unique calibration... They will never unleash their true potential. Rising unrest. In Lagos, protests erupt. Crowds flood the streets demanding access to Maxwell's inventions for ordinary people, not just governments and billionaires. Hand-painted signs wave in the air. Power for all and the future is O-U-R-S. Similar protests flare in South America and Asia. Maxwell's technology has awakened not just industries, but entire populations. The people are no longer willing to wait. In New York, news anchors debate heatedly on live television. Some call Maxwell a hero. Others label him a threat to global stability. The world is split, and the tension is rising with every passing day. The unexpected visitor. Late at night, Maxwell's lab grows quiet. Most of the team has gone home. Suddenly, a convoy of black vehicles pulls up outside. Men in sharp suits step out their badges gleaming faintly in the moonlight. They are not here to negotiate. The lead official walks into Maxwell's office without knocking. He places a folder on the desk, its cover stamped with a foreign government seal. Inside are photographs of stolen shipments, raided warehouses, and shadowy figures moving his inventions across borders. The official leans forward and says in a low, deliberate voice, Mr. Chikambutso, the world is spiraling out of control, and whether you like it or not, you are at the center of it. The proposal. The official slides a folder closer across the desk. Maxwell opens it. Flipping through images of cargo containers being diverted, crates opened in secret ports, prototypes stripped apart by foreign scientists. His jaw tightens. The official speaks calmly, but every word feels like a blade. You've unleashed something extraordinary, but dangerous. If you don't work with us, others will tear it apart, and they won't be as kind. We can offer protection, distribution, and global control. All we ask is exclusivity. The room grows colder. Outside the window, the city lights of Harare shimmer, but inside, the air is heavy with unspoken threats. Maxwell closes a folder and says nothing. Whispers of betrayal. The next morning, rumors ripple through the lab. Some engineers whisper that Maxwell is preparing to sign with a powerful foreign bloc. Others insist he's planning to reject every offer and keep Africa in control of the technology. But one thing is clear, there's a leak. Sensitive documents appear in the hands of journalists. Headlines explode across the world. Is Maxwell about to sell out? Secret deals in the works? The public that once celebrated him now grows restless. Protests outside his lab shift from cheers to chance of suspicion. A shock in the market. Meanwhile, in Hong Kong, traders watch in disbelief as a new product suddenly floods the underground market. Sleek devices, almost identical to Maxwell's, are being sold at half the price. Buyers rush in, desperate to claim a piece of the future. But something is wrong. Within days, reports emerge of malfunctions. A skyscraper's lights flicker and die. An entire neighborhood plunges into darkness, and a luxury car bursts into flames in the middle of a crowded street. It becomes clear someone is counterfeiting Maxwell's technology, and the fakes are spreading faster than the originals. Maxwell strikes back. Inside the lab, Maxwell gathers his core team. On a massive digital map, red dots mark where counterfeit devices have appeared. The pattern is spreading across Asia and Eastern Europe like wildfire. Maxwell leans over the table, his voice steady. If they want to mimic my work, they'll regret it. 
will show the world the difference between their lies and our truth. He announces a daring move, a live global demonstration of his technology. Not behind closed doors, not in secret shipments, but on the world stage, where no one can deny what his inventions truly are. Outside, the crowd swells again, sensing that something monumental is about to happen. The countdown begins. Invitations go out to governments, scientists, journalists, and influences across every continent. The event is set to take place in Johannesburg, at a massive arena prepared for a spectacle unlike anything the world has seen. Planes are booked, security tightened, and speculation runs wild. What will Maxwell reveal? How will he silence the critics, the counterfeiters, the doubters? And in the shadows, his enemies prepare too. For them, this demonstration isn't just a threat. It's their last chance to stop him before the truth becomes undeniable. Arrival in Johannesburg. Private jets descend one after another at O.R. Tambo International Airport. Convoys sweep through the streets under heavy guard. The city, already buzzing with anticipation, feels like the epicenter of the future. Inside luxury hotels, diplomats and CEOs whisper in hushed tones. A German automaker representative confides to a Japanese delegate. If this works as Maxwell promises, combustion engines are finished forever. Meanwhile... In a dimly lit apartment on the other side of the city, a rival group unpacks crates filled with sophisticated jammers, drones, and infiltration equipment. Their mission? Make sure Maxwell never finishes his demonstration. Behind the stage. Backstage at the massive arena, Maxwell's team works like clockwork. Engineers calibrate self-powered cars, drones, and miniature energy modules. Every component must be flawless. One of his closest aides, Sifo, rushes to Maxwell with unsettling news. We've intercepted chatter. Someone's planning to disrupt the event. They're inside the city already. Maxwell looks up, calm but resolute. Then we make the truth louder than their lies. The world takes their seats. As the stadium fills, the atmosphere turns electric. Tens of thousands of spectators wave flags, while millions more tune in live across every continent. Giant screens project the stage, where sleek prototypes shimmer under spotlights. Commentators speak in urgent tones. Ladies and gentlemen, history is about to unfold. Maxwell Chikambutso will attempt the most ambitious live demonstration the world has ever seen. The crowd erupts as Maxwell walks onto the stage. He doesn't carry notes. He doesn't need them. The world already knows what's at stake. The sabotage begins. The car circles the arena flawlessly. It's hum steady and pure. The crowd roars, but high above, the saboteur's drone locks onto Maxwell. At the same time, the disruptor hidden beneath the stage powers up with a low, dangerous hum. Suddenly, the lights flicker. The silver car stutters mid-track. Gasps ripple through the arena. Commentators murmur. Something's wrong. Is this the end of Maxwell's claim? In the shadows, rival operatives smirk, believing their plan is working. The counter move, but Maxwell doesn't flinch. Calmly, he raises a hand. With a subtle gesture, Sifo activates a hidden override system, one Maxwell's team secretly built for this very scenario. The stadium lights blaze brighter than before, blinding the drone. The disruptor beneath the stage short circuits, erupting in a flash of sparks. Security rushes in, pulling the saboteurs in the shadows as the crowd roars in outrage. Maxwell speaks into the microphone, his voice steady. They tried to silence us. They tried to counterfeit us. But the truth cannot be sabotaged. The crowd erupts louder than ever. The ultimate reveal, with the tension broken. Maxwell unveils his final surprise, a compact self-powered energy cube. He places it in the center of the stage, unconnected to anything. Screens show live readings, enough output to power an entire city block. To prove it, the cube is connected to a massive grid of lights surrounding the stadium. In an instant, the entire arena, every bulb, every screen, every drone camera, glows brilliantly, brighter than the Johannesburg night sky itself. The audience rises to its feet, chanting Maxwell's name. The world responds. News networks break into live coverage. Headlines scream across the globe. Maxwell Chikambutso's demonstration stuns the world. Sabotage foiled, technology proven. 
Is this the end of oil? Governments scramble. Some announce immediate negotiations with Maxwell's company. Others panic, calling emergency meetings to assess the collapse of energy markets. But ordinary people in villages, towns, and megacities cheer. For the first time, the future feels within reach. A new era begins. Weeks later, distribution hubs open in Africa, Asia, and South America. Instead of being sold only to the elite, the first units are sent to schools, hospitals, and rural villages. The world watches as lights flicker on in places that have been in darkness for generations. Cars run endlessly on silent roads. Factories power up without pollution. And Maxwell? He returns quietly to his workshop, already sketching the blueprints for something even greater. Because for him, this was never the end. This was only the beginning.